All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. We are going to discuss a very important question which confuses many people when they are starting off with their study of astrology. And this is a legitimate confusion because there is no direct answer given anywhere, especially uh, in different websites or in different uh, YouTube channels. You won't find a direct answer. Most of the answers are like Kichiri. Okay, so Kichiri is like a, it's a very famous uh, Indian dish, Vedic dish, where you mix uh, rice and you know, dal and all these things, and sometimes some vegetables, and you mix up things. Okay, so it's like a mess sometimes, which means Kichiri is not a mess, but the answers given is like a mess. So the question is which is more powerful okay is is the house more powerful or the sign more powerful okay so uh, th this means suppose a planet is strong by house and weak by sign what does it mean okay so generally if you see what people think is they will cancel out each other okay so that that, that means they're like plus minus okay so suppose uh, the other day when I made the video on yogas, I was speaking for a Capricorn Ascendant. So let me continue with that example only. So suppose for a Capricorn, uh, Saturn is, um, not Saturn, as I said in that, Sun is in debility, okay? But it is in Digbala, okay? So similarly, let's take the example of uh, uh, Gemini Ascendant who has Venus in the fourth house, okay? So for Gemini, fourth house is the sign Virgo. So when Venus goes to Virgo, it gets debilitated. But because it is in the fourth house, it is in Digbala. It's in directional strength. So what does this mean? Okay. So people think that the debility of a planet gets cancelled by the exaltation, uh, by the Digbala. Okay. And people think that the uh, the other way around also. So imagine uh, Saturn is in Aries for an Aries Lagna person okay now because it is in the ascendant it is in debility but they say planet in the ascendant is strong so that cancels the debility okay they think like this or then what they will do is to confirm they will check the Navamsha chart okay they will again see what is Saturn doing in the Navamsha okay or sorry what this Sun in Libra is doing in the D9 okay but then the funny thing is you do not have to cross check the D9 for this. Okay. Which means you of course need to check for the ultimate power of the planet. But to resolve a confusion like this, you don't have to resort to another divisional chart. D9 has to be used for a different purpose. Okay. To judge the strength of that planet. But not to check if the house and the sign will cancel each other. Okay. For that you don't have to check any fancy divisional chart. You can know that from the uh that bar chart itself all right so today we will discuss these important points because you know, many times i have seen when uh people come to me for consultations out of 10 nine people end up telling me this that oh sir i went to one astrologer he said you know your venus is exalted but afflicted okay so therefore, this Venus is not good, not nice. Or somebody told me my Venus is in debility, but it is in trines. So that means Venus is still good. Well, what does it mean? A planet is good, bad, you know, can't just uh, go on dancing like this. Okay. Now imagine I, imagine somebody comes for a consultation and I tell the person that, Oh, sir, actually your Venus is terrible, uh, but you know, somehow it's good because it is sitting in that house. And then the person is like, okay, Venus was bad. Now it is good. Okay. Thank you. Nice to know that. But then what happens ultimately? <laughs> what is happening in my life ultimately? Hmm? Okay, we understand astrologically there are exaltation, there are debilitation, there is Digbala, there is Dikshunya, so many things are there. And they are perfectly correct. There is no ambiguity there. But sometimes people think that, okay, what do I make out of this? What is the meaning when a planet is in such contradictory yogas? Okay, Because ultimately, if I cannot understand what is what kind of effects it is having for my life 
then there is no use of knowing these placements or yogas, right? Because it's, it's like a waste of time. If I don't know what will happen out of these contradictions, then why should I study astrology at all? Okay, Or why should I even go and get a consultation? It's of no use. So therefore, as uh, as astrologers, we whenever a client comes to us or even a friend or any family member, we are reading their horoscopes. We should always be able to tell what is exactly happening in their real life. Okay, we should not give these fancy answers like, "Oh, you are in Sade Sati's difficult period." I mean, three Rashi's will always be running Sade Sati. Okay, so that means. It's like one for 25% of the people of this world will always be in Sade Sati. Always. Okay. In rotation, of course. Because there are 12. So 3 is one fourth of 12. So so 24%. Just imagine. 25% I mean. So does this mean that one fourth of the people will always be miserable? They will always be unhappy? No, it's not like that. Okay. So we should be able to tell Okay, astrologically, these, these things are happening because people are not much interested in astrology. They are only interested in seeing how astrology can help them in their lives. Okay, So, whenever we such, see such contradictions, we must resolve it. All right. So, therefore, uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to my website down in the description box. Okay, And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. All right, so the house and sign act in different ways. Okay, so if we know both the ways, then we will never be confused. It is like salt and sugar. I always give this example. So if a planet is exalted, let's take Sagittarius Lagna. Sagittarius Lagna, Cancer is 8th house. So if Jupiter, the Lagnesh, goes to 8th house, what, what happens? Now Lagnesh is in a Dustana, terrible placement. Let's assume it's terrible. But then Lagnesh is exalted. Great placement. <laughs> so it's like saying you have a glass and then you are putting five teaspoons of sugar there. <laughs> and you put five teaspoons of salt. Not five, of course. Nobody will put five. Let's imagine you put one teaspoon, okay, which is equivalent to five teaspoons of sugar. So what happens? Does the salt and sugar nullify each other? They cancel out each other? No, never. When you drink that, of course, it, it won't be like a liquid. It will be like poison if you add so much. But imagine, it, it's like poison, you see. I mean, exalted planet in Dusthana. So it's like you know, one teaspoon salt in a small glass of water and five teaspoons of sugar. It's crazy, literally. So... Therefore, the flavors will be there simultaneously, which means the exaltation of Jupiter will always give the results of exaltation. And the placement of this Jupiter in the 8th house will also give results of the 8th house. Okay, So we should not mix both of them and try to nullify each other or cancel out each other. Okay. So, because in astrology, uh, 1 minus 1 is not 0 actually. It's 1 minus 1 is uh, 2 actually. <laughs> now, 1 plus 1 is also 2 or it can be 0 sometimes. Okay, 1 plus 1 can be 0. And 1 minus 1 can be 2 sometimes. Okay, or it can be 4 also. It can be 8 also. And 1 plus 1 can be minus 8, minus 16. It can be anything. Okay. So, therefore... When the Lagnesh is exalted, forget about the house where he's sitting in. Okay, this, this is irrespective of the house. The person has relatively more power to make good decisions in life. Okay, now good decisions in which regard? Well, that the horoscope will tell. Because if a Lagnesh, if the Lagnesh is exalted uh, in a particular house, uh, the person may not like certain houses. Okay, the person may not like to uh, uh, focus in certain houses. Okay, that we shall discuss later why that happens. But the point is, the exhortation means awareness. Okay, high awareness. The sign tells you the awareness, which means your inclination, the knowledge that you have regarding that planet or regarding that house. All right. 
and that is like inside knowledge is not outside it is inside okay the guru comes and gives you knowledge but the knowledge goes inside okay knowledge is not in the books in the scriptures in dictionary it is there they are just written form that that's not knowledge knowledge is when you understand and you imbibe it in your life that is actually knowledge that's wisdom so knowledge is something which comes from the sign okay the zodiac sign so the awareness the level of intelligence that you have okay and what does the house mean the house means the field of activities that you are surrounded with okay which means the field of activities like for example 10th house shows you know name fame power position authority 7th house shows marriage okay so now the question is if you want to get married which is better to have a exalted planet like venus in the 6th house or to have a debilitated planet in the 7th house well of course the second one is better because the although the planet is in debility but it is because it is in the 7th house it will it has the power to give you marriage not that it will it depends on the entire horoscope and the dashas but it can give you marriage okay but even if the 7th lord is exalted and it is in the 6th i mean let's imagine like this not only 7th lord if the second lord or the 11th lord is exalted and it's sitting in the 6th house let's just assume uh um, even then although the exaltation is there but because it is 6th house which is denial of marriage which is celibacy which is 12th from the 7th house it can deny you from uh, getting married okay but uh, well, what does this mean so suppose let's take the example of a sagittarius rising okay <clears throat> sagittarius lagna is uh, uh, sagittarius lagna let's take 7th uh, house okay let's take the example of mercury now mercury is sitting in 12th from itself okay from the 7th house which means it is in the 6th house from the ascendant now mercury is in a very good sign for mercury which is taurus okay so mercury is greatly enhanced he is he is very dignified he is very happy there okay sign wise but now the 7th lord is in the 6th okay so because it is physically sitting in the house which is denying marriage so therefore in mercury mahadasha or mercury antardasha if the person is above 25 then the possibility of marriage reduces why because the results are coming from the placements okay which means wherever the planet is placed but what does this mean mercury is badly placed for marriage but he is in a very good sign for mercury okay well this simply means that if the seventh lord is exalted this means that the person has a can have a good understanding depending on the entire horoscope of who to marry of what kind of a person you should marry okay or how to run the marriage or not ruin run the marriage <laughs> okay so uh, therefore this this will give result irrespective so now it's like saying a person knows who to marry not that he has he or she has found the person but the person is very clear oh i want these these things in the spouse and the spouse should be like this but because it is in the 6th house somehow the person cannot find that person to marry okay and on the other hand it's the other way around if a planet is in debility in the 7th suppose um, mercury itself is uh, not not mercury sorry if any other planet suppose uh, let's take ketu's example okay suppose ketu is in gemini for sagittarius rising so ketu is there in the 7th house but it is in debility because ketu is in debility in gemini so it is like saying the 7th house is activated i mean ketu's dasha is active and you are fine going on finding people like anything okay but because it is ketu and that which is debilitated you are confused whom to marry it's like if you want you can marry now within 24 hours you can go and just get married but you don't know whom to marry so you are confused okay so uh, but even then the probability of you getting married after a confusion is more than the probability of you being very clear and not finding somebody right because if you don't find somebody how do you get married to somebody right because if you are confused at least you may get married to somebody 
okay but if you are not finding that person how 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 do you get married it's not possible right so therefore in kali yuga because people are only concerned with the external results okay because of that i would like to make this statement and many people may contradict me and they may say uh, what you are saying is not true it is not supported by the classics but my statement is very clear in kali yuga the house is 1000 million times more important than the sign because people want things by hook or by crook when it was satya yuga or treta yuga or dwapar yuga it was not like that the, the sign was more important okay the house was not very important even if you uh, read the classics you will always 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 see they will say a exalted plant is very good it's great blah 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 all the fancy things it will it will tell you but it won't tell you much about the houses you will see you know you will never find a uh, fancy statements of a planet in the 10th house you know or in the 11th house or you know in the 9th house in the 5th house it will say the planet is very well placed blah 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 all these things they will say but it won't glorify the planet as much as if a planet was exalted and that is why many people tell me that oh they read this you know classic you know brihat parashar hola shastra jatak parija these classics they read and then they saw exalted planet blesses you with all good things in life you know blah 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 it's like you will be a king and all these things are written and then you see there's nothing happening in your life why because you are not concerned with your inner peace your inner knowledge your inner realization you only want things externally okay so the million dollar question which is more important the house or the sign the answer is not the house not the sign it depends on what you want and who you are as an individual okay if you are only concerned with externals then thumbs up house 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 you don't even need to check the sign okay but if you are concerned with what parashar muni ultimately says you know that uh what is your realization how are you elevating as a person then the sign is the most important okay because i have seen exalted plan uh, debilitated planets in career houses like second sixth tenth and eleventh the person is doing something which they are not interested in okay but because the person is getting money the person is doing okay so now is the person happy when he is doing that he is definitely not because the happiness comes from the sign okay so it depends on you either are you wanting external things more or you want inner happiness more okay so depending on that you have to judge which is more important okay and in my experience when i have done consultations i always see that if uh, sun moon or ascendant lord or the trinal lords lords of fifth and the ninth if they are well placed okay not house wise sign wise if they are well placed okay all of them or at least three of them then i have seen the person values the sign more than the house which means then the person could say sir okay i want to have this career but this will fetch me more money but i will not happy when i go into that zone so should i go there or should i stay in this uh, place which will not give me much money but it will give me more inner satisfaction so for them the sign is 1000 times more important than the house okay even if they are not getting that much money because they are happy doing that they will be happy okay but if the lagnesh sun moon and the lords of fifth and ninth or the trines are very badly smashed they are ruined their indebility or hindustana or in enemy sign okay or in the kama houses also i have seen sometimes then the person is least interested in anything inside the person only tells me oh i want to find a spouse who is good looking who is rich blah 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 i want to find and i just want to get married i want to enjoy i want to you know go 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 to uh, honeymoon i want to go here i want to go there or i want to career i want to become a billionaire all of these things okay so then we know that we need to give more importance to the house all right because that is how the person is the person has this misconception that happiness comes from external acquisition okay not that it is wrong to acquire thing externally that is required for survival but 
that cannot ultimately make you happy okay so the placement of the trinal lords and the lagnesh and sun moon and jupiter will decide what is more important for you it is the sign or it is the house all right and uh, thank you very much for your patience if you are new to the channel please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation you can please go down to the description section of my videos all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him